Hello everybody. Hello. Uh, my name is Tom and welcome to Final Zero. My name is Sani Balup. Um, I'm working for SUSE, like Tom. I forgot to mention it. It's quite nervous. Yeah, sure. And so before we start, we have a quick demo. Hopefully it works. Um, to give you a brief introduction about the method of this is my machine, the right one. So, um, and then uh, uh, before Richard, which is a project from our community. It's a very Richard. Which is a fully productive application. Um, we hack this people to give it some network capabilities. And I, here's a buddy widget, and I see Daniel's people session. We try to connect. Okay. So this also connected, and I yeah. throw them the people. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. yeah. throw. So that's really tricky. Ah. <laughs> so and then I thought you can throw it back and yeah, as you yeah. see it's very very productive for yeah. office and <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the fun part of the talk. No, it gets serious. <laughs> so everybody knows now what zero comp is, right? <laughs> <laughs> First, we give you a short overview about ZeroConf. What is ZeroConf? Yeah, it's only a brief introduction. We don't go in deep. Touch the surface. Okay. You might ask Leonard. I, I will ask every question, Leonard, if you get to be here. So, and then I, yeah, maybe more Leonard's part, I will um, introduce some ZeroConf implementations. Um, the big question what do you have to do to write ZeroConf applications? It's not done with zero code. And then we give some more demonstration, not like not only the people, there's more. But also fun stuff. And a demo would probably be the biggest part of our talk, so uh, just start with a short introduction. Um, zero count for support zero configuration. Zero configuration network is a bundle of network techniques to um, make it easy to write network applications and just don't care about something like about IP addresses, subnet masks, and so on. And as you saw in the nice application paper, this uh, it opens new possibilities for developers. So the main idea is to think more network to give your application network rings and it probably fits best for ad hoc networks like so this one small lands, we have like here yeah, or we have meetings or so we have just a um, dumb switch here connected with these two laptops and the MacBook and it has no routing or any pressure so uh, this makes uh, Casual sys admins really up to read, so there's no need that an admin with deeper knowledge of networking techniques comes to your machine and sets up your interface. Like IPv6 or not? Yeah. Um, like IP version 6? Yeah, yeah, sure. Who knows such an address? We will come to that more later. Um, zero count covers three parts. It's also called the three layer foundation of zero count. Um, so it solves these three problems for you and it looks like magic. This is addressing, this is naming for your hosting and discovery. Yeah, the addressing, like you might uh, ask for, for IP first. There's some automatic magic to assign IP address for IP version 6. And for IP version 4, there's some further magic, we call it 
Abi, 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 machines to that switch and they are assigned to their own IP addresses. And this is quite nice for home networks. Okay, nowadays everyone has some Wi-Fi router or something like that which in DHCP server uh, built in, but in this case, like an online conference or something like that, where you don't have the cent central infrastructure in place, it's quite handy to have. Um, the naming? It's done with a technique called multicast DNS. It's an invention of Apple. Um, the main goal is that no DNS server is required, no central DNS server. It works mostly exactly as plain DNS, except that your naming requests are not sent to a central DNS server. They are sent to a multicast address. And uh, yeah, here you see the addresses. And the responding of these requests is done by a so-called MDNF responder, which works in background and listens to port 53, 53. So uh, when there is a DNS server in the network, it can coexist both of the reports. So um, the most important part for for this uh, application developer view is what really like the discovery part of the Silicon stuff. Because um, you are able to discover services in your local link network um, without a central instance in your network like an SLP server. How many of you run an SLP server at home? Okay. <laughs> you have a problem. Yeah. You don't have one. Yeah, then. Yeah, expect Cypher, nobody runs one, so you can uh, discover services in your uh, local link with um, DNS-based service discovery, it's like the name already tells, it's based on plain DNS, so, and it also contains um, human readable uh, information, so w what you see in the, the B wall widget is some, okay, it's not that, User friendly, maybe, but okay, never mind. Um, People is frozen. Yeah, you, um, you can have uh, uh, tag your service with uh, with a service name and a service type to search only for a particular service, like in this case for what you call people. Or I guess you are not on as people. Yeah, as people like. underscore people dot underscore TCP. Yeah, and so this widget shows only this uh, all, all instances on this local link which running or which offer the service, and you can also have some optional configuration parameters. This is, for example, on the client has the location information on which floor or something like that. So you can um, write a, a graphical rich application. <coughs> without bothering the user to know about IP addresses or the port or something like that. So it just really opens new, you as a new uh, possibilities to write application like we did with people. So um, for you as developer, the third layer, the discovery layer is the most important one because this is the layer you use in your applications for publishing services, for browsing for services. The other two layers are done by ZeroCon, if you don't have to care. But we we'll show you in the later slide how you will publish in two hours. Okay. Yeah, let's come to some major ZeroCon implementations. <coughs> As I already mentioned, um, Apple did uh, the major inventions in the ZeroCon stuff. Um, they shipped a package called Bonjour, or formerly called Rendezvous. Um, Bonjour is also available for Windows and also for other POSIX like operation systems. And in the Linux environment, there is Awahi, and which the author is Leonard. Leonard. Yeah, maybe. Do, do you want to introduce Awahi? Or should you just need introduction? Oh, okay. <laughs> Who knows Awahi? 
services and it also uh, provides if you're not that familiar with Stilus uh, then you can also use a, a, a Lipper Avahi client which wraps the Stilus interface and you have callbacks, callback functions so it's uh, asynchronous and, and it's, it's very nice time so good job and it also offers lots of bindings like from Norman Python and I guess many more and also Lots of help us for, for example, for the key, uh, main loop integration, and what else? Or is anything that the team has yeah. had common lots of support, crazy stuff. So, yeah, 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 this, this, it is, uh, it's just, it's really nice um, to implement. It offers everything you need, so it's neat and perfect. So, go on. Yeah. So, the Great question. What do you have to do to uh, to write zero conf applications to use zero conf capabilities? Yeah, um, I worked my time with give you an introduction in how to implement this with Avahi. There is an, in the source code of Avahi a very very good uh, detailed demonstration how to uh, um, browse and for services or public services. This level was also the way I started to get familiar with Salah. It was very uh, easy. And yeah, the, uh, on this wiki page you get also the description for the Divas interface. But I guess you have also Divas introspection, right? We do have that. The Divas stuff is not really documented, but the Balani client is documented and it mostly just reflects what Divas does. Yeah. So if you need some documentation for Divas, just go to the documentation for the C API and then you should be able to find out what, what is. Yeah, so that's the best point to start with Avari. So, so if you're a KDE developer, there's a great package called KDE and SSD. Uh, with KDE and SSD as a name, let's expect you can do everything what the third layer uh, should do. You can publish services, you can browse for services. And here's a short code snippet. Uh, we will show you later that this code really works. Should. And first of all, you have to allocate a public service object and you do this while passing a service name, a unique service name. And the second parameter is uh, it's the most important parameter, it's the service type. So. Um, when you want to browse for the service, you have to reuse exactly this service type. And of course, a port where your service runs on. Afterwards, you start the service by calling the method publish. So, what do you have to do to browse for this service? Um, it's really also very easy. You have to allocate a browse object and the only thing you have to give this browser object is a, a service type we want to browse. And if you're familiar with Qt's uh, uh, signal and slot technique, it would be really easy for you to connect to the signal service edit, where you get the remote service pointer. And you can resolve this pointer and can do everything. You can ask for yeah, the port number, the service running, the host name, the service name, and something else. And last you have to start your browse and yeah, you get a lot of signals. Hopefully, yeah. So that's basically all for the theoretical part. We try to show you something. First of all, our self-made people. Um, with a small example. 
Yeah, um, Tuxkröte is the name of the MacBook. So, actually, you can. is Giver. It's a GTK application for file sharing. You can easily drop files in a body list and the peer, which also uh, has announced the Giver service, yeah, can get these files. And I took this great capability and wrote an application called KPAS, or formerly Kiffer. But uh, there are some reasons to rename that. So um, <coughs> we just show you that. It is available as Plasmoid for KDE4 or as Preactin. Yeah, Daniel has started this. Yeah, it's like in KDE3 is 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 Send him so we can see our buddies. This is Daniel, this is Marcel. So we can send him a file or a clipboard entry. This is the extension, which is not yet in the giver available, but we could. So we just send him a file. Maybe to presentation. And Oh yeah, there's something in my hand, not on it. Ah, just takes a while, seriously. Um, Sorry, yes, the file. Sorry, yeah. Strange. Is that some number of protocol or just a um, friend line? And it's just... Um, it's um, HTTP. It's some kind of HTTP. Yeah, it's HTTP put. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just a plain, uh, very, very simple HTTP put implementation. <laughs> because, yeah, it's not standardized for the code. So, it's actually good fun. So, why should it So, I'm just presenting a clipboard entry. Hi, there. Hi, there. Yeah, I just write to send Daniel a clipboard entry. And then you send me this, uh, this pass as clipboard, and if, it, if I accept, I can now uh, select this pass. No, it's you're running KD3, so. Oh, you're using because, it. Yeah, oh. because it's activated via Tbus. Uh, it's a clipboard function of KD4. Yeah, just so do it again. Mm. You are setting just a note of number of messages. You can't start. Yeah, uh, we just skip run anywhere. So what you also can do with KPAS, you can start a public file server. This is also announced. Uh, we are zero run. So you can see in the body list that I am running a public file server. I will publish my home directory. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, I've successfully published. And I found now in Conqueror and KG3 in the Zeroconf KIO, uh, that is, uh, yeah, home directory. Yeah, the public file But it just takes a while. Maybe it should take a small directory. Yeah. Is that ah, a yeah, or whatever? It's a method, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, what else? Yeah, for, it also works with Gimmel. Yeah, it's pretty clear. Um, maybe we show 
so you see what you Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as my uh, final exam project for my traineeship, I wrote um, uh, I enhanced synergy um, for uh, with the zero conflict capability. Uh, I don't know how many of you know synergy. Okay, uh, for those who don't know, it's an application to share input. So um, your mouse, if you look at the border of your screen with your mouse, then it redirects the input even of your keyboard to this machine. For example, if I wouldn't move now, it's just a, it's just a yeah. uh, what I show now is um, It's 
more it's more likely to be used for an out of the box solution. It's more useful for debugging and uh, to try to reduce uh, our problem. So we will switch to a quick demonstration. So yeah. So what we are going to do first? So just kitchen sink. We add a new group, like we saw on the slide. For example, what we're going to see, um, maybe it's the pound word. So I pull on pound word with KDE. And here you see the object type handling. This will be in the future can detect those. Right? When we do the discover, we will see uh, which they are going to support it because there are some devices which doesn't even store n memos or notes. So we do a quick one, just in context. Now you have to choose by hand. Maybe we can improve the layer uh, for the plugins. So we take the KDE plugin and it takes the pound plugin. So the KDE plugin at the moment don't need any configuration. It just uh, syncs the standard resource. And and this is also uh, <coughs> quite tricky. Uh, and this is uh, the pound configuration. It just changed from USB to Bluetooth. The pilot being supports for two weeks now. Uh, hot sync while reset is quite cool. So lots of beating edge features today. So I turn on the pound device. You can see no wine. So now I press sync and press yes, sync. So there was one entry. Oh, it's still solving. Go, go, go. Uh, we can in the meantime start. Can you address it? No, there, there are empty entries. Okay. Oh, there are really empty entries. There are two uh, unnamed entries on the top of the so maybe we should delete them. You know, and this is why you, why you need the revision history. Ah, no. Because okay. after, after half a year of using this, yeah. you find out that you have half of your replicated and then they will have oh. empty entries and you don't know Actually, why. it should never happen. So. Yes, <laughs> but it does. Okay, so I, I just deleted the so unnamed entries and press the synchronization and press here as well. So now they got deleted. This was quite quick. Maybe I should think more data. So there you can see it's still not. They got not synced again. They still can. And you, I don't know if anyone can see this. There's now only one entry. Okay. So maybe um, I can create a new entry. Any suggestion? So. What? Data loss. Data, we take data loss. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> so we have data loss. Too many logs. 
So this is a, a more and driving it. Normal logs for end user, like I didn't see uh, those two. Uh, oh, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe, so yeah. This is this is this should be implemented on the on the front end side. So you mean some user friendly stuff? So. <laughs> ah, I know about the logs. Oh, okay, so there there are, there are many logs behind this. So, um, yeah, um, now we saw an, um, if you want, it, it, you can create a new entry. I don't like to do that, but I... Uh, it does depend on the size. Well, okay, that helps. But I don't look at it anyway, so... Okay, um, in the meantime, I... Um, uh, I, I trust you. Um, I can show the uh, new features of the capabilities. Uh, yeah, you, you, this is Amazon Film, the command line interface. I, uh, we, I uh, was not able to report the kitchen in time with the AD. It, it builds, but it doesn't link. So, so we do mention. I can mention. You enter? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, well, I tried to like test, but doing the file. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is it going to take UTF-8, by the way? Oh, yeah, that's, that's working. Yeah, that's, oh, this is not UTF, this is it's, not, it's Windows. Okay. But we can handle those. We, we, we do, uh, in the plugin we do um, uh, this kind of uh, conversion. Oh, um, I just do this thing, then I have to go. If you want to see the demo on the merger, we can met at the booth. And so last uh, question. You just touched, uh, Really good uh, subject, the internationalization, UTF supported languages and stuff like this. And it's actually, um, if this works, it can on the block, if it, it does support this or if it doesn't support this. So if the framework doesn't care about it, we don't use the UTF 8, and the buttons have to convert, when they convert to the XML format, or as well to UTF 8. Do you store the output the format? If the information originally is in the code page 1521 and we store it in UTF. Yeah, we convert it then back to the from UTF from the XML format, which is UTF8, back to code page 1100, whatever. Okay. So I do this last thing and then I have to hand over to Timo. Oh, it's now doing installation of Bluetooth. Oh. So, um, <coughs> out of six, out of time, I, I have to go on because I got time off. So, so um, conclusion, backup, backups are recommended. Obviously, it's still not perfect, but it's quite cool. So, and we really need more developers. It's, we have 15 plugins. Some of them are unmaintained, or we don't even have devices for it to test or to validate if they even work. And um, you can find further information about the project or the Lipsync Map project on those websites. Or if you have some specific question about open sync, put them on the mailing list, or you can also contact me directly. So. There's no time for questions, sorry, but you can. Uh, meet me, me uh, on the booth. So. Yes, and there are some developers.